Hi everyone, it's Mike again. This is part two of my Drawbar Organ Simulator project using Hubert Wollig's fantastic Prop B3 organ sound generator and my MIDI controller. I'm carrying on where I left off, so please watch part one first. Let's see what happens when we change a few parameters. First we'll zero the draw bars, like this. Then press the mode button to get to the draw bar settings. And increase each one separately. But just play middle C or C4. The 8 foot draw bar is the fundamental note. 16 foot is an octave below. Four foot an octave above. Two foot an octave above that. And one foot an octave above that. So combined they sound like this. and you begin to get an idea of how the Hammond gets its distinctive sound. But we're not quite there yet. Between the 16 and 8 foot draw bars is the 5 and a third foot draw bar which, if we're playing middle C, gives us a G above, like this. And the 2 and 2 thirds foot, a G an octave above that. and the one and a third foot, another G, an octave above that. Finally, the one and three fifths foot draw bar gives us an E above C6. Combine them all together and you get the full rich sound of the Hammond organ. Just in case you're wondering, the term foot refers to the length of pipes on a pipe organ and indicates the relative frequency of each note. In other words, if 8 foot was the fundamental note, 4 foot, half this length, would make a note twice the frequency or an octave higher, and so on. The relative lengths of five and a third, one three fifths, etc., would give you the fifth and third harmonics, or G and E, when C is the fundamental. Varying the levels of these draw bars individually gives you hundreds of thousands of different permutations, and so different sounds which was a key selling point of Hammond in the 1930s. Now let's have a look at the other settings. First, get out of the drawbar settings by pressing the mode button again. The first adjustment is the overall volume, which I think speaks for itself. Next is the balance, which is the balance between the large baffle rotor in the Leslie and the treble horn. This is fully on the horn speaker, and this is fully on the rotor. Next is the distortion setting, which is quite subtle. All these features, by the way, are on the original Hammond B3. Then it's the reverb setting, no reverb, to full reverb. Very nice.
Then we have the vibrato chorus setting where we can select vibrato, chorus, or off. It's really two different types of vibrato. Next is the percussion setting which gives us two types of percussive notes from the four foot or two and two third foot draw bars. These notes are short percussive sounds activated when a key or set of keys is pressed. But a new percussive note will only sound after all keys are released and a new one pressed. The Leslie selection is next and is on or off when you press this button. fast or slow when you press this one, indicated by 0 for off, S for slow and F for fast. Finally we can save any combination of settings in 10 different presets here. The P number goes from 0 to 9 and will automatically load all the saved settings for that particular number like this. To save a selection of settings we select a number we're not using, set up all the parameters Then go to SV and press up or down. The moving arrows indicate that the settings have been saved to the PIC EEPROM. So next time you switch on you can load any of your saved settings. Right now on to more technical things. This is the controller schematic. The keyboard MIDI note messages come in here to the 6N139 opto isolator and through a simple transistor gate which is switched on and off by the PIC. The control MIDI messages come from the PIC's UART serial output to another transistor gate, also controlled by the PIC. The two MIDI signals are combined here. There are two isolating diodes and combined with this 10K resistor the signal is limited to 3.3 volts to go to the MIDI input on the prop micro which we'll see in a minute. I've also shown an optional MIDI monitor circuit here which gives a useful indication of MIDI messages being sent out by flashing a small LED. The seven control buttons here are decoded by the PIC to generate the correct MIDI control signals and all the drawbar and effects levels info are generated by the PIC and sent out to the LCD here. And finally, here is the regulator I see for the 5 volt supply rail. Also, the schematic shows the PIC serial in circuit programming connector here. Here's the schematic of the sound generator section. The 32K EEPROM here stores the program for the prop micro, which is loaded automatically into the prop on switch on. The I2S bus comes out on these pins to the 16-bit stereo DAC here. And as I mentioned previously, only one channel is used. The analog output of the DAC then goes to one half of a dual op-amp, the LM358. 
The original design uses a TS914 quad op amp here, but the LM358 is readily available, cheap, and in an 8 pin DIL package. It works perfectly, so I went with this. The first op amp filters the audio signal to get rid of any residual clock artifact on the signal. In other words, the steps associated with the DAC output. And the second is a unity gain buffer which drives the line output. The prop programming connector is here, which is only used once to load the program into the EEPROM. I won't spend time describing the programming processes of either the prop or pick because there's loads of info available on these subjects. But you will need a pick programmer and a prop plug to program the two micros, as well as the relevant software on your PC. The prop micro uses a 5 MHz crystal and an internal PLL winds this up to 80 MHz. The prop and its EEPROM are supplied by the 3.3 volt supply rail from this 3.3 volt regulator. And both the TDA1543 and the LM358 are fed from the 5 volt supply rail. As in my other videos, I have left the construction details to you. All the information is available to be able to do this but it's probably not a project for beginners. So I think I'll try and make a PCB for this project. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Well, once again, that's it. I hope some of you have a go at building this project, especially if, like me, you love the sound of the tone wheel organ. Let me know how you get on. Thanks for watching and bye for now.